Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. A very, very wet morning this morning. And uh, frustrating day yesterday due to, guess what, my favourite topic, collectivised decisions, collectivised decision making, collectivism, the bane of the modern society, the idea that one person knows best for a bunch of other people who are perfectly intelligent people and could be trusted to make their own decisions without any help at all, but have to accept the help whether they like it or not. And today's example is uh, NHS email addresses. Now, those of you who have been mad enough to listen to any of my previous broadcasts will know that we had trouble referring patients to the local NHS hospital for um, OPGs. And that's because we don't have an NHS email address and the oh, big lake Lake. I knew there was a lake down here. I drove down here yesterday and there was a lake. Oh. So we just keep getting our old emails bounced back saying uh, no relay relay denied, relay denied, you know. So I decided to get myself an NHS net or an NHS.com or whatever org email address. So, and apparently this is possible, you know, you can be a totally private uh, subcontractor if you like, not a subcontractor, but a totally private organisation that uh, interfaces with the National Health Service, and you can have an NHS number. I mean, basically you have to be registered with the Care Quality Commission, and anyway, um, so I start completing this application form and online and then uh, it says have you done the uh, data protection questionnaire which of course i haven't i'm sure it's a requirement of uh, nhs dentists will be familiar with this requirement to have completed this information technology audit effectively um, and um, and of course we haven't done it because we take responsibility for our own IT you know we're responsible to the information commission commissioner's office like everybody else is who uses IT and don't see why we should jump through hoops uh, in additional hoops for the National Health Service you know there's this is a classic case of bringing in laws to control something for which laws already exist there we go so that's a so it's a recursive problem in that you start doing something and that requires you to do something else and then you start doing that and that requires you to do something else so I start doing this uh, IT questionnaire and um, you know there's there are far more than 50 questions to be answered and of those 45 are compulsory to the point where I mean and, and not being compulsory doesn't mean you have to answer them you have to answer them all but there are there's a core set which uh, require for example uploading uh, documents or um, assessments and things like that so <clears throat> to get an NHS email address I then found I have to complete this IT audit and then to do the IT audit, I then have to go searching around for all sorts of other documents and things. And the problem with the IT audit is it's, um, it's, it's designed for everything, everybody, from, from myself at the extreme lower end, where one dentist, one nurse, one hygienist, no receptionist, right the way up to the biggest hospital trust. And it requires you to do something, things like uh, hardware audits, where you have a list of every computer, every modem, every router, you know, every plug for all I know, 
and they all have to have the serial numbers listed and everything and I can understand why you know perhaps in a larger organization they might lose track you know somebody might take a laptop home and uh, they might not realize that they're losing laptops for example but um, in this case really I mean it's, it is complete overkill and there are there are other stupid requirements as well for, for example they ask if you are a member of um, uh, if you subscribe to any sort of higher standard of data uh, integrity or uh, uh, information technology you know it's a bit like saying uh, you know, you'll, you'll get a discount on your insurance drive for driving if you're a member of the Institute of Advanced Motorists are you a member of the Institute of Advanced Motorists because if you are then we might be a bit happier with you you know have you got any other certification hello just about to do a type overtake so so I mean that's fair enough I mean I'm happy to say no well I don't you know I mean given the level of technology we've got in the surgery I don't feel necessary to join any sort of advanced anti-hackers uh, group but then some of the other questions are more um, ridiculous like for example they ask you if you have arranged for a third party to do a penetration test on your system and a penetration test is uh, is basically asking someone who's a, who's a, what they call a white hat hacker because there are there are two types of hacker there are the black hat hackers from North Korea and Russia and China and basically everywhere and America <laughs> who um, who hack into your system for uh, fun and gain money uh, or and uh, or information and then there are the white so-called white hat hackers who go to great lengths to make sure that everybody knows that they are white hat so they don't get arrested and they study how to break into computer systems um, they say in an attempt to try and help people understand what their security vulnerabilities are or, or to better understand what their own organization's security vulnerabilities are uh, and there are lots of hacking competitions and you know I mean these things almost everything can be hacked uh, I would say probably everything can be hacked uh, which is a, you know, a lesson that the governments are going to learn when they create their uh, digitized stable coins that they're, they're about to bring out the digitized dollar and the digitized pound and that will get hacked um, but you know what there's no way that a small surgeon or a single dental surgery not even a chain of dental surgery it's just a single dental surgery with one dentist one nurse and one uh, hygienist is going to pay a white hat penetration testing company to try and to see if they can hack into our system because for a start um, your anyone can be hacked you know what I mean but all that's going to happen is that they're going to write back and say yeah it was ridiculously easy to hack into your system um, all we did was we turned up at the front door and we told uh, the building receptionist that we were there to um, perform maintenance on your server etc etc and uh, they gave us the keys we let ourselves in we pressed a button on the um, modem reset the uh, on the router reset it to the default password got on your Wi-Fi and uh, hey presto we're into your server you know so there's a very good video called hacking your way to the penthouse I think which you, you could try and look for that on YouTube anyway uh, so they won't give you a, a certificate unless you can say that you've had an external pen testing which puts you in a big 
difficulty, doesn't it? I mean, I'll leave it up to your imagination as to how you get around that. But that's a sort of stupidity. And so, and also they do things like, you know, when was the last uh, significant data breach that you had as a result of uh, somebody's credentials being incorrect? In other words, someone being perhaps denied access to something they should have had access to or uh, being allowed access to something which they should, or more commonly, being allowed access to something that they shouldn't have had access to. <coughs> and that's not... Uh, no, again, that's not... Uh, a problem that a tiny a micro surgery is going to have and then of course there's the the, the the usual panoply of how often do you have meetings and can you post the details of the last meeting that you had on this subject uh, or one particularly stupid one was can you uh, post the uh, attendance register at the last meeting that you had to discuss information technology um, with the, the attendance names and their signatures and their roles. So, no, no, nothing about any sort of what was discussed or the agenda or anything, but just the attendance sheet. So, I don't know what planet these people are living on. I mean, I'll mean, leave it to your imagination as to where I'm getting these documents from. Um, obviously from genuine meetings, you know. But uh, they just don't understand the way things work in smaller businesses. You don't need to have a formal meeting. You know, you're done. If I think of something that's relevant to do with the computer passwords or anything, then I, um, I just... I mentioned it to the nurse who's usually the only other person in the building at the time and, and then we both know we don't need to have a meeting with an attendance sheet and an agenda and a motions and votes and things like that you know they asked me to certify that I'd notified my employees that should they come across any irregularity in terms of uh, information technology being leaked or uh, information being leaked or anything that, that they have the uh, ability to make a formal whistleblowers complaint you know I mean can you imagine me marching up to my nurse and saying Lou I'm required to notify you formally that if you should you see anything suspicious about the way that I'm processing data you have the right to um, dot me in uh, to the information commissioner's office, etc., etc. She go, she go. You know, you better have a little sit down and put a wet flannel on your forehead because these uh, rules-based <laughs> guys are you're getting to. You know. <laughs> anyway, cut a long story short. We filled in this. Uh, IT questionnaire and then they say do you want to publish it and I'm like yeah okay I'll I'll publish it you know I don't know who's gonna read it I don't know who's going to uh, where it's going to be published but I press publish and then uh, I was then able to go back to the uh, email uh, people and tell them that I'd done the questionnaire and uh, they were then within a sort of an hour they'd give me an NHS email address now you know you might think well that was only that was easy you know but it wasn't I'm not kidding you it took me over three hours that took me over three hours just to get an NHS email address now bearing in mind I could have got a Gmail address in in probably less than 30 seconds so but this is all, all this is passed on to the patients all this cost all this wasted time, you know. All this time taken out of my clinical activities is passed on to the patients in terms of their fees at the end of the year. And uh, I encourage you, if you haven't done the IT questionnaire, to have a look at it. 
because I think you probably will end up having to do it at some point. But, um, and it's best if you haven't got some of the documents that they asked for, it's best if you do um, at least know that you're expected to have them. Anyway, that's my story really. I mean, how to get an NHS address and then, I mean, what, what are the advantages of having an NHS address? Well, it gives you um, uh, access to the NHS directory, which is basically a directory of everybody who works on the NHS who's got a, a NHS email address. So for example, my, we looked up my nurse's consultant. He's there. We looked up one of our ex-nurses email address to you know so that we can say hello probably all or both of those are probably abuses of the system I'm sure uh, but what do you do you know when you get on a system and you you have to have a little play about with it otherwise how the hell do you know how it works you know how do you what what's your first email that you send isn't it it's a sort of a hi I'm on the NHS email what about that you know question mark question mark uh, so um, but it's going to be, it may, it may come in useful once a year when we have to usually communicate with an X-ray department, you know, and ask them what their latest uh, series of hoops is for. Oh, I must remember to turn that fan off. Either that or get a microphone. I might experiment with getting a microphone, one that clips on the seatbelt or something, because, um, the, the sound quality is some of one of the things that I'm having the most problem with at the moment. The video quality, who cares? Who wants to look at my double chin for t 20 minutes? But um, it's, it's the sound quality that's the thing, isn't it? And if I could get a decent sound, then perhaps I could just release the sound only version of this on uh, Spotify or um, on, the, on my website. Right, I'm at work now, so I shall see you soon. Have a good day. Stay safe. Bye.